Hello, can everyone hear me? Yep, you're good. All right. All right, well, I'd like to kick off by starting off uh, describing a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm James Zemgowski. I am a alumni of UW Lacrosse, and I've been doing professional development work for about 13 years now, which seems kind of crazy thinking about uh, how long I've been doing this. And as Maggie said, I am working at McGregor Partners as a staff engineer. Uh, today, I'd like to walk through uh, the different types of forms that Angular allows you to work on or provides, provides functionality for. I want to showcase how to create validation error messages for the inputs for your forms, as well as uh, determine if your form is valid or invalid based on uh, the, the, uh, what the user has entered in on that form. And then I'm also going to highlight some pros and cons of each of the ways of creating forms. A uh, little disclaimer, uh, I'm assuming you have some basic Angular knowledge for this. I don't plan on covering what dependency injection is, what routing is, uh, view children, et cetera. However, uh, don't be scared if that is not you, because there is a plenty of resources out there to pick up and fill in the gaps of what I leave out in this presentation. In addition, I will be providing some resources at the end of this PowerPoint, which Maggie will send out uh, afterwards to uh, fill in any also blanks that may have occurred with my presentation. Forms, uh, we love them, we hate them. Uh, if you work with any UI uh, web, modern web application, you are probably building them one way or another. Uh, and one would think that just providing a bunch of inputs for your user to type in and validating that and making sure it's correct before you send it off to your back end was easy. You'd be sadly mistaken because there's many ways you could do it. And some of them are right, some of them are wrong, and some of them just give you plain headaches. Angular has helped us out or helps people or developers out by uh, creating tools to be able to create forms. Uh, the two ways that they provide are template driven and reactive. Template driven, as the name implies, allows you to create validation and rules for your form within the template itself versus reactive where uh, reactive is where you're building the form control, which is a class that Angular provides, and then you're linking it, your, your UI or your template code to that form control directly. I plan on walking through both of these uh, in this presentation. So for my presentation, I have in I have a repo of the code. I've created a simple input here where the user goes ahead and types in a favorite color, uh, red, blue, green, and it will provide validation logic as it, you, the user is typing or uh, to say, hey, this field is required or you need to have more than three characters or you have to have less than 10 characters to uh, reactively give the user information as they are adding it to the form. In addition to that, I've displayed the information on the bottom here as the user is typing in, just to showcase that as you're typing in the form, you're able to display that information as it's coming through. Uh, if anyone's looked at any of the Angular documentation, you will notice that this is very similar to the example they give in their uh, app, in their documentation when they're discussing forms. And I did that, just wanted to call, I did that on purpose so that after this presentation, if you wanna go back there, you should be able to pick up even more information about how this is done and it should look fairly familiar to you. So let's start by creating a template driven form. Uh, I don't know if you see this bar, but, uh, so a template driven form, in order to start uh, create that, you need to include the forms module. This forms module is going to import all of the things necessary for creating the template driven form, such as ng form, ng uh, model, et cetera, et cetera. On the screen now I have, on the left-hand side, I have my component class. And then on the right-hand side, I have the template. The, within the component, you could see I defined uh, a favorite color string variable. It's just, we're gonna treat this as our domain model, but in reality, it would be a lot more complicated. You'd have an object that contains your address information or user contact information or whatever information you're trying to collect. But just for this simple purpose, I create a string variable. I'm linking to that string variable in my template via this ng model directive. This is a directive that Angular provides 
that allows the creates a two way binding for what's in your component to your template. Validation is here inside the template. I'm adding directives called required, min length, and max length. And that's what I'm telling the template to say, I want to validate on these fields for this specific input. I want to, and here uh, in this section, I am creating a link or a variable called favorite color model. And I'm saying, telling Angular, I want this to be the ng model. And I do this so then I can reference it in my error post down below. So I'm simply doing a, a check to say, hey, does this input missing, does it have an error called required? And if it has the error called required, then it's going to provide a, the error message to the user stating that they, they missed a required field. So what's happening in the back end and background for what this is happening? So when Angular create or when it sees that ng model, it's actually creating a wrapper of your component class. Where uh, I'd like to think of it as a wrapper, it's probably not a wrapper, but it is uh, putting a man in the middle per se. Where the template, in this case, the color favorite color blue input, uh, every time an event fires, it's actually going to um, the ng directive, which has got its own instance of a form control instance. And then from there, it pushes that data down to your component. So in this example here, I update the view to be blue, and then it's going to fire an event down to the form control instance. And then after that gets updated, it's going to fire another event based on this ng model change event that Angular has. It's going to push that data to my model that I have in the component. So it's good to call this out because uh, Based on just the documentation or looking at examples, you may not realize that there is actually this code in the between you and your component that's happening. And it makes it clear why uh, one of the reasons why Angular's uh, created a reactive was so that you can have more, for, uh, more control over your form control that is being created for you. In this case, when you use template driven, it's doing all that work for you. But if you want to be able to control it yourself, you'd have to build it yourself, which is where Reactive comes in. Uh, just to showcase the reverse side of things, where the component uh, gets updated and it changes the color to red in this case, when the, the ng model will see that it gets changed and it will fire a detection call to your to the directive or the form control, and then from the form control, it pushes that data via a view update to the template. So it's just like two, this is how the two way binding works with uh, template driven forms. So some of the pros and cons to this, uh, this is probably the easiest way to create a form. Uh, it's simplistic and easy to understand since uh, to a developer, they don't need to worry about how it's happening. They just say, I have my control. I want, I have this object in my control and I want to link it to my input variable and it, pretty easy to comprehend when I type something in my input it's going to update to or bind to that uh, to the component or the template and vice versa. And another pro to this is your component code is doesn't blow up to be very big. Uh, most of lot, some of that valid validation is inside of the template itself, and so it will contain your validation logic uh, spreading that code out and. It, since a lot of that validation logic is happening in the template, you don't have to worry about creating helper methods or anything inside of your component to get access to a form control uh, since it's handling a lot of that for you. Uh, a con to this is it will add more code to your HTML. So if anyone has an instance of a UI development team and they only focus on creating the UI application and don't care about business logic or validation rules, then uh, you're going to be inundated with some extra code that's in there for those rules. Another thing about template driven is it makes it more difficult to test. So in order to unit test, you have to do some trickery with how the events are being fired to be able to catch that. It's mostly easier to just run an end to end test like Cypress or Protractor to run your whole application and then test things uh, with a template driven. And then I point out here the synchronous nature of 
the the end to end where the messaging is happening where it's going from the control or container or sorry the template to your form control and then to your component uh there's some timing issues that could occur uh with that paradigm but uh, normally it won't happen unless you're doing something very complicated, like you're trying to uh, check out what the form state is as soon as you initialize or something. Moving on, let's showcase how to do the exact same thing, but with Reactive now. Uh, for Reactive, you need to import the Reactive Forms module. Uh, this will contain form control, form group, and some other form components like form array that Angular provides for building a form. As I did in template, I have on my left hand side, I have my component, and on the right hand side, I have my template. You can see here I do something different. Instead of initializing or creating a string variable inside of my component, I am creating a form control. Form control is a specific class that Angular has created, and it's going to manage not only the uh, basically the form state for your application. In this case, a form control is a smaller subset of your form. It's just one input variable. I will showcase how you would relate to a form group later on as you are uh, building a larger form. But for this purpose, I just have one input, so I have a form control. And you can see here that I am defining or initializing that value to be null or blank when the user goes into it. And then I'm adding validators such as required, min length, and max length. And this code is inside of the component itself. I then uh, use the form control directive within my template. And this tells Angular that this, uh, this input field is going to map to the form control that's in the component. And so then that's what's creating the two-way binding between the two. Because I'm defining the form control manually within the component, Angular is able to reference that directly. I don't need to create a separate, uh, I don't have to create a separate annotation or a tag name to say like, give me access to the model so I can ask it questions. So in this case, I'm asking the form control do you have the required error? Do you have a min length error? Do you have a max length error? And then I'm displaying that error as I would as in the template. The other thing to notice is the template side does not have any of the validators in there. I don't have required, I don't have min length or max length because that code is currently inside the form control. Only displaying what the error is and what error message I wanna to give to the user is being displayed in this case. Another thing I wanted to call out is with form controls, uh, you may want to provide helper methods in order to display things. So in this case, I've created a getter method that says, give me the favorite color. And it knows it is just a helper method to uh, be able to retrieve the color, making it easier so I don't have to say form control, give me the value, uh, which becomes more complicated as you're dealing with more, uh, more hierarchy in your form. Uh, if you have like an array within your form or you have a large form group with multiple form controls, that's when it could come in handy. So just to re, uh, showcase what's happening here, it's uh, very similar to the previous one, except you don't have a man in the middle. The template is when an input changes, it's pushing that data directly into your form control that you've created within the component. Uh, that's basically it. That's the two-way binding. There's no uh, Angular's not doing any extra work with that. The same goes when you update something within your component. It's going to push that data down to your input or your templates as well. So pros and cons of this. Each form element is directly linked to a form model. You have complete control over the form. Angular didn't build it for you, you built it. So you stated what you want, what validators you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. It allows for easier testing to do this as well. Your component has all the code. So you could easily fire up your uh, a unit test for your component class and be able to validate what the state is when I initialize and uh, when I change a, a form component or a conform control to something else, what the validator is going to say at that time. You also don't have to worry about events being fired off between that, like I said, within the template driven, that middleman who's regular uh, pushing the events through. 
Uh, the con to this, though, is there is a higher learning curve. There's more things you have to take in consideration while using form group. You need to learn what a form group is, what a form control is. You need to learn how to take data from your model into the form control if you want to initialize it with state. You have to be able to push that out into there. And there's also more code just to be able to access those variables, which I will go into a more example in the uh, next demo I have. And Obviously with this, there's a lot more component code that could grow with as you're adding a bigger, larger component. So let me go into a more in larger demo because nobody wants to just see a single input field. Uh, that seems pretty simple, but I will go into a larger uh, example here. So I within the repo, uh, I think it'll be posted at the end of this presentation. But I have a repo where I've created uh, the first I, the first input field that I showed, but then I also created this shipping contact list. Uh, it's basically using an in-memory database filled with some customers or shipping contacts here. And I create a form for both reactive and template driven to be able to add and create that shipping contact. So let's go ahead and uh, edit Sandy Threshold here. And as you can see, the form is currently valid. The submit button is here. It's gray, uh, green, blue, because I'm able to save it. Um, but if I were to delete this and cause the form to go invalid because the name is required, you see now the name field populated with an error message saying, hey, this is required. And in addition, I've added validation logic to the submit button that allows me to, uh, doesn't allow me to submit because it's in an invalid state. Uh, in addition to that, I create a reset button on both the template and reactive form so that you could revert your changes to back to the initial state. Uh, one thing to call out here is I'm using routing to be able to populate this form. So when this component loads, it's going to check into the URL to determine what ID is being, uh, what ID is present there. And then from that, it's going to populate the form from the back end, which in case this is a in-memory database, but if you had a back end server running, it's going to pull that user in. So you could always reset by just re-pulling from the database. But in my example here, I am just reverting back to the initial state I started with when I loaded the contact form. So let's go into some code to showcase this. Uh, first, I'll start off with the uh, template-driven form. Uh, I'm hoping everyone could see my screen. I could uh, make the screen text even larger here. But uh, here, just to walk through my component first, is I have, oh, sorry, I want to go through template. Yep. Uh, when I am starting this component, I do an ng init, and I am saying, give me the parameter from the URL, and let's load this. If it's null, or not provided, then we know that the user wants to create a new user and our new shipping contact. So it's just going to initialize the model without putting any value in there. If I do have an ID, then I'm going to grab, I'm going to call my shipping service with the shipping contact ID. And I'm going to, uh, when I get that information back, I'm going to populate it as the existing contact. And then for the template driven, I'm creating a view model. For this view model, I wanted to separate the state of what I got from the backend server from what I'm currently editing. Because template driven, every change you make on your input is going to update the component or the model that you have in the backend. So I wanted to separate that. I wanted to say, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to change what the initial state was. So then in case I have to make a reference to it to say if the change from one to another was valid, or if I want to just reset in this case, I'm able to do so by going back to that. Uh, then with this, just to go into here, uh, I have for one getting the view model is very simple. I'm just doing a deep clone of the shipping contact. So the object is a shipping contact that I'm mapping to. If it doesn't exist or I didn't provide one here, I'm just returning some blank values. So with this initial state of my view model, con uh, shipping contact view model, I am able to reference that within my input here. So as you saw within the uh, smaller example, all the input fields are using this ng model to create the two-way binding. So then when I, in this case, when I'm 
when I type in this input field for company, it's going to update the company field within this shipping contact here. Another a different thing, though, from the example is in this case, I'm using a form tag and I'm defining uh, a reference to my ng form as opposed to defining uh, ng model, which in this case is just for the specific input field, ng form allows me to get the complete state of all of the models inside of the form and allows me to ask it questions on the complete validness of the entire form versus just asking for the, the how valid the one input is. So in this case, I have my shot, I'm doing my shipping contact form and I'm able to reference that down here at the bottom for the primary submit button. I'm able to say, disable this button if it's invalid. In addition to that, I, Angular allows me to grab this, uh, this ng form that it created automatically by using the at view child ng form tag here. Basically what this is doing is it's saying, hey, uh, find the ng form that was created inside the template and give a reference to it so the user can use it within the template or the component class in here. And so for in this, I'm able to also reference and ask it if it's valid as well. Just in case I want to add some extra layers of security, I don't want to just disable the button uh, because the user could just easily change the CSS or HTML to change, enable that button. I add the logic here on the on submit as well to say, okay, I want to be able to say, no, you can't run this function. Granted, uh, you could even get past this too if you're really uh, clever, but hopefully you're preventing invalid forms from being saved into your database by doing some validation on your backend server. This demo does not do that though. Uh, then just being able to, it, all the rest of the form inputs are very similar as you saw in the smaller example. Uh, the postal code is probably the most interesting interesting in the sense that I am referencing the postal code. Um, I, <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah, so I am referencing postal code here and then I'm asking it if it has errors based on here. So sorry, got a little lost there. Uh, I'm defining a postal code variable here that says it's ng model and then I'm referencing that for my error messages here to say, does it have the required or if I'm missing the pattern? which uh, is another validator that Angular provides out of the box. So going from there, I'm gonna move on to reactive side of things. Uh, the exact same form, but doing it reactively. So as we saw with the ng on, it, on the template, the ng reactive form is gonna do a very similar pattern, except instead of creating a view component or view model, I am creating a form group. So if the if I have the ID and I get a shipping or contact from the backend server, I'm going to call create this form group, and this is where uh, you could start to see how the managing the form group state or form group is going to be complicated or can complicate your component code, I should say. So in this case, I'm defining a form group that I'm going to use within my component class, and that's what all my template is going to be referencing in order to see what the state of the form is. So I have first name, last name, address. I'm creating validators for that. Just like in the previous template or template code, I have a postal code validator with required and a pattern as well. Uh, I wanted to showcase this. This is kind of important because then you, how you initialize your form group is up to you. So there's two ways you could do it. I could could have said uh, I want to create as I'm creating a form group, initialize it to the, init the existing state. So in this case, I could have did existing and then dot first name, initialized it that way and not need this check here. Or uh, how I proceed to do it this way is I'm using what's called a patch value uh, function within here, which allows me to take the existing object and patch it into the form group itself, which allows me to say, if I wanna add more values to the form group, that can be, uh, it allows me to like take cherry pick items from the form or from the component, the contact here and put it into a form group. So it sees if it's, there's a, if the object I'm passing into the patch has a first name, it's gonna populate that.
And so from here, now that I have my form group created within my form, my component, I'm able to reference that uh, within the form tag here. Very similar, I'm stating this is my form group or contact form. So I'm defining what the form is going to be. And then within all the inputs, it's slightly different. Instead of saying I want a form control, I'm stating what name within the form group is going to be referenced. So because my contact form was initialized with a first name, first name field here, I'm going to be able, I'm able to use this form control name to get the first name from that. And that's how it creates that mapping. How do I ask it if it has an error? I have to say, go through the contact form object itself, get the controls from it, look it up by first name, and then ask it if it has an error. This is where having helper methods would be helpful. So I could create a getter method here that says, get me the first name component and then have this return this and it would I could then reference first name but now you can see how your component code is growing over uh, growing as you add more helper methods to be able to manipulate that form group control uh, this goes in the hand with the postal code as well where I'm referencing that postal code this would have been a good use case for having a getter method so that I don't have to look up by string both times here in this inside my template. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, uh, which I wasn't easy for me to define within uh, the pros and cons for Angular template and reactive though, is it seems like, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but there's not really a good way to validate this uh, versus having it compile. So for instance, if I were to update my template form here for postal code, and I say, I accidentally spell code, I say codes because I'm incorrect. I get a compiler warning right in my TypeScript, as well as if I look at my, the servers running in the back end, you can see that it compiled with warnings. It tells right away that I have an error with this when using the template driven way of uh, referencing, because I'm referencing that model, that two-way binding is referencing directly that model object. However, with template or uh, reactive, I'm sorry, uh, if I misspelled this, uh, it doesn't actually uh, have a compiler warning. So I can actually, this doesn't give me a red line or anything. The compiler actually works. But you can see the forms kind of now messed up because the one rendering that component or try, attempting to access that field class is now have has an error saying that I can't access it because postal codes is undefined. So one thing I wanted to call out there that uh, when comparing the two is uh, the tooling that's behind both of them. Uh, outside of that, I disable the, I reference the form group to ask it if it's completely valid or invalid for reference disabling enabling my disabled button. And then the only other difference between the two is the reset form. The nice thing uh, for the reactive form portion, I'm able to say uh, I could either repatch the value to reset the form from my initial state or the shipping contact form, I could use a reset uh, function within the form itself to initialize it back to this state where it's all blank values. Again, if I used existing dot, uh, reference to populate each reference or each field individually, that reset would have populated everything for me. So going back to the presentation, uh, my last final thoughts on this, and then I'll open up for questions. Uh, I feel like uh, I want to just call it template driven and reactive forms are both valid ways to create forms within Angular. Uh, they both have their pros and cons. And I would make sure if you're going to pick one over the other, I would make sure that the pros and cons match your needs. Uh, I wouldn't go through an existing application and converting it to reactive because that's what uh, people say is more scalable. If you already have a working domain model or template driven form working, it, it doesn't make more sen sense and it will just, it could be more complicated than what you have today. Uh. So with that, uh, are there any questions? Oh, at the end of this, I have 
uh, my resources, but are there any questions about what I presented or the code that I've written for this? What, what if you need a validation rule that isn't provided by, by Angular or Reactive? So good question. Let me go back here. So you're talking about if I have, for in this case, I'm using validators for, uh, this is a reactive example, and I have a validator that says min length. Uh, Angular provides a mechanism for being able to create your own custom validators. Uh, the nice thing with reactive is it is uh, just functions. So I'm able to create a function within my component that says, uh, take in a, something and validate it and then return. There's a specific format you have to follow for Angular, but if you return that object saying if it failed or was valid, it will add, you could add that to this array here and then you just added a validator because it's all function-based. With ng- And with, what if the oh, go ahead. validation, if you have a validation rule that requires a relationship between two, like say you have two fields that in order for any form to be valid must be relatively prime, for example. Yes. Yeah, so like if you have your uh, first name and last name and you want to make sure that uh, Bill Green wasn't the name provided or something, uh, that may be a ridiculous example. But uh, so for that, there is other there's for that you could you would access a validator for the form itself. So you could reference and say when this form when inputs change on this form, you could check the complete state of the form itself to uh, run a validator for it. So in, in the example I gave for the first name, last name, can't both can't be certain fields, you would basically create a validator on the form group itself, and then be able to provide a validator that would be check the two components inside of there. I, I don't have an example of that off the top, uh, ready for presentation, but I know I've seen that within the Angular documentation. Any other questions for James? All right, well, thank you, James. This was fantastic, very detailed and thorough. So I learned lots of new things. So I'm excited to put this to good use. So thank you.